Hello there. Welcome to Galaxy Brains with Patrick Darty and Denny Carter. Uh, we had never seen our intro until about five minutes ago, Denny, and I had not been told that we were getting footage from the James Webb uh, NASA Space Telescope. <laughs> also, I think uh, we are officially crypto bros now that our eyes yeah. <laughs> are, are, are lit up like that. At least that's that's what I gather from uh, being online. Well, and what color your eyes are symbolizes what kind of crypto you're really into. And then I'm really into, uh, you know, corn coin, which is <laughs> all the, it's pegged to the price of corn futures and it's a really good investment. It's huge in the Midwest. Huge, 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 Midwest. huge here in uh, Eastern Missouri, Southern Illinois. Um, but yeah, Denny, this is Galaxy Brains. We're going to take a look at, by the way, thank you for joining our Roto World Draft Day Marathon. The Galaxy Brains, to introduce you to the concept, Denny and I, we're just going to take a look at some of the interesting news from the past week or so. A lot of interesting news in training camp so far, Denny, uh, yeah. beginning in New England, where speaking, this show is called Galaxy Brains. Yeah. I would say having Matt Patricia and Joe Judge yeah. coordinate your offense is a, a real deal. Uh, Galaxy Brain situation. It was widely first guessed. We were like, oh, it doesn't seem like it's going to work. And uh, it's not working whatsoever. <laughs> the Athletics' yeah. Chad Graff has point reported that the point of concern is nearing for the Patriots offense after it has struggled badly throughout training camp. And ESPN's Mike Reese reports the number of quote unquote, no chance plays and mm -hmm. lack of consistency has been notable. Denny, how could we have seen this coming? You couldn't have because Joe judge coached one of uh, the most potent, uh, most productive offenses in recent NFL history. Just last year when they, I'm, I'm checking my notes quickly. Yes. Yes. They ran a quarterback sneak from their own five yard line. Uh, and now he is in charge of the quarterbacks, um, including the very young uh, franchise, potential franchise quarterback, Mac Jones. It's uh, it, it was baffling, but we we accepted it because it's Bill Belichick. And we say, well, who, who are we? to question how can we question bill belichick right he he has to know something we don't right joe judge special teams coach uh who who honestly just looked like a, a, a cosplay bill belichick for a long time you know sleeves rolled up um <clears throat> you know real real hardcore kind of guy and then uh, matt patricia a defensive specialist for his entire nfl life who who was an offensive assistant's assistant last year? Like yeah. he was like sharpening pencils. I think for for it's a big uh, job in New England. I will Josh say. McDaniels and and now he's in charge. Uh, apparently he's like at the at the top of the offensive coordinator food chain. Whatever it is, it's a debacle. And yeah, the no chance plays. Like I, if you read the the reporting on this, they're talking about like they can't even run the play. Like no. they take the snap, it all falls apart, and Mac Jones has to spike the ball. Denny, you joke that neither Matt Patricia nor Joe Judge have any experience with explosive offenses, but Matt Patricia oversaw the most explosive offense in the history of the NFL, and that was any offense that was facing his Detroit Lions defense. Yeah. So it makes he knows a think. thing or two about explosive offenses. Right. He should actually think that. He should, he should say, what did I do to coach the most uh, uh, horrific defense possible in Detroit, and, and what, how did teams exploit that? And then, and then maybe he can reverse engineer, reverse you know, engineer. A, a decent offense in New England. Galaxy brain it. Denny, what is our next topic as you take a swig of a, a IPA? Uh, no, it's, it's a seltzer. Give me a break. Uh, yeah. So I, I happen to be listening to uh, the athletic uh, football podcast today. And it's a, it's a, a good podcast. And I, not as good as a good football show. Friend but, of the uh, show, Robert Mays hosts that is, podcast. Is, yes. Yes, Robert Mays is very good. Uh, and they had on uh, Zach Jackson, who was reporting from Brown's training camp. And uh, amid t talk of Deshaun Watson and Jacoby Brissett, he said, you know, Amari Cooper is going to see 12 to 13 targets a game. I don't know how accurate that is, really. but Seems high. <laughs> it's, uh, that, that is a lot. Seems record-setting. <laughs> um, adjust those ranks. But... He, he, he just mentioned this uh, so sort of as an aside, and it caught my attention. Uh, it was this. Uh, he said, David Njoku, quote, hasn't caught anything all camp and never <laughs> catches anything. I, I, and, and, and then, and then they, they kept going on about, you know, they, they moved on to the next topic. So it's unclear if 
if you know that's an exaggeration exactly what context that's in but th those are the words that the browns beat reporter said and it really made me concerned about his usage and what you know what we think oh hey you know he signed a big contract he's back he's the he's a good pass catcher efficient guy that's not good that's not good and frankly but it also just comes out of nowhere because as we know the first five years of david and joker's career it's like one catch after another <laughs> never drops the ball david and joker you're scoring too many touchdowns please stop yeah. scoring so many touchdowns stop catching so many passes and yeah i mean it is with the Njoku stuff all off season, I wonder like, am I missing something? Is this like the same David and Joku? Why are they franchising him? Why are they giving him a four year, fifty six million dollar contract? And it turns out maybe we weren't missing something, and he's still not good. Hey, I mean, I mean, he actually said not get. He hasn't caught anything all camp. <laughs> the camp's been two weeks. Seems more than, tough. Right? <laughs> That's more tough. than two weeks. I mean, and and then he mentioned oh, uh, Harrison Bryant, who is the tight end too, supposedly. He's looking good. And I said, <laughs> that's uh, very promising. Oh boy. You are uh, hoping on the David and Joku's long awaited sixth year tight end one breakout sixth year breakout. And and he's only 22 years old. We yeah, should of mention. course he's that's you're right. He's actually 20. He's always a little younger <laughs> than you think. Denny, I don't Dan Campbell has uh, a vir virality to him, not vitality virality. He oh, yeah. likes to go viral. He had a very intriguing quote over the weekend where he said, referring to his team, we are freaking starving. He actually said freaking, by the way. He didn't say the worst one. The very Dan Campbell, I feel like they like the word freaking. Mm -hmm. We are freaking starving. We are starving. So the hyenas better get out of the way. And Danny, I just have a question for you. If you were a hyena, would you get out of the way of a Detroit lion or would you simply easily kill them and eat them? What would you do? <laughs> I, I'm so confused by this quote. And and uh, and yes, I mean, if I were a hyena, I would get uh, 12 of my closest friends and I would go ahead and uh, end the lion. Um, <laughs> I don't know if he's if Dan Campbell has spent time watching documentaries about um, how that works, but uh, aren't the hyenas hungry? Uh, I mean, I mean, aren't, aren't hyenas They're very, very they're... hungry. That is the thing. So I think he's saying, like, if you're like a carcass laying on the road or the savannah, like the hyena is like you had your time, you had your moment, get on out. Uh, the lions are here. DJ Shark is eating what remains of this carcass. <laughs> Not you. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really make any sense. It's a lot of mixed no, metaphors. Get, right. Get the hyenas. You, I think you are that you're starving. Like the hyenas are the ones that are starving. The hyenas are, are bottom feeders, right? They're just looking for like anything to chew on. And, and so I, I, I think, I think the lions players should, should be the, the hyenas in this, in this situation, in the scenario. But uh, Dan Campbell, I think, gets so excited that uh, these these things don't really run through his, his brain. There's no filter, certainly. No. Dan Campbell will be a star of Hard Knocks, by the way. Can I, I just want to share a quick thought on Hard Knocks. Right? I just want to say my favorite trope is like when it's like there's a sixth round rookie, like where I'm going apartment shopping today. Like this is where I'm going to live in like greater Detroit this year. And that's like the whole 55 minute episode. I think this, the format needs a little uh, kick yeah. in advance. Uh, yeah, I, I, I not to, not not a huge hard necks guy myself. No. Denny, what is our next topic? We have <clears throat> uh, Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett. You Kenny had to Pickett. find him. You had to find him because he's he's down on the depth chart, Denny. So it's hard to find his name. It's not you, at the top. Right. You may you may have heard of Kenny Pickett from such recent events as the 2022 NFL Draft when he was drafted by the Steelers as potentially the heir apparent to Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, so far, it's not good uh, seeing that he is Kenny Pickett is the number three quarterback on the Pittsburgh death chart behind some combination of Mitchell Trubisky and Mason Rudolph, who had been, you know, left for roster dead uh, as of three months ago and now is taking first team reps talking about Rudolph, right? Trubisky has been terrible. Rudolph is Rudolph. And still the rookie Pickett can't you know, can't get in there, can't establish himself as any, any sort of viable threat. And I just want to, I want to credit the Steelers for following the process, the draft process of just expending massive draft capital on the hometown boy. That's what you do. You know, if, if the hometown kid is available, even if he has a weird thumb, even if it's, it's a disjointed double jointed thumb, he can't literally, he can't grip a football apparently. Um, and he's going to be playing in freezing cold weather for half the season. It doesn't, none of that matters. He played in Pittsburgh. You get him. That's what they did. A credit to the Steelers. 
Denny, you joke, but how do you think the 1942 Akron Canneries or the 1949 Council Bluff Rivers won the title? Do you think it was by ignoring the local talent? No. Uh, yeah, so I think it's actually is. Yeah, the, the Kenny Pickett thing, uh, one team identified one quarterback worthy of a first round pick this year. Maybe a bit of a red flag that he fell to number 20. And yeah, uh, the Steelers so far are getting what they paid for. I yeah, think. I I just I maybe Kenny Pickett Kenny Pickett is the ultimate gamer. You know, he had that fake slide last year. That was cool. That that would I like that. Was that. Sort of cool. They immediately changed the anytime they make a play and they immediately change the rule book. Denny, we're actually out of time for Galaxy Brains, but I was in the show by asking you one question. Justin Tucker, four year, twenty four million dollar extension, now the highest paid kicker in NFL history. Why are kickers making more money than school teachers and firefighters these days? What has this country come to? It's awful. And honestly, it's a matter for Congress to address. <laughs> We're looking into it. By, we know it's very hard for this guy. But bipartisan legislation, people on both sides, they just can't. I mean, can't be making more than auto mechanics. He's a kicker. I mean, come on. So he kicked the ball. I could literally do this. My, Joe Manchin kicks the ball every session. That's right. Um, it's really anyone can do it. Anyone can do this show. Except they can't because their brains aren't demented like Denny and I. Thank you so much for joining us for Galaxy Brains. And for more Galaxy Brains, stay tuned to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.